Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me, Goldman Q3 of the bi weekly contest 50 maximum XOR for each query. So, this one actually kind of was very tricky. I think the key thing to note is kind of really undersec- uh, understand, I was going to say dissect and then understand and said in a real way, but understand the problem or what they're asking, right? Um, and this one, it's very tempting to kind of simulate what they do. And if you do a for loop, you can kind of uh, figure it out very. You know, but it's, you know, you could brute force it in a way, but it's going to take a very long time. So a key thing to note is that that uh, the ends are going to be big, the maximum bit, so you cannot try every possible number. So then the way that I thought about it was, okay, well, one thing that I thought about first was, okay, you know, you look at the example here, and it is essentially, you actually, even though they, they ask you in a really weird way to try to throw you off and confuse you, um, you are actually trying to do the prefix sum or prefix of this. It's just that it's the prefix, but in an inward order. Because now you're trying to get the maximum number for zero, and then try the maximum number for zero and one, and then zero one one and zero one one three, and so forth. And and the way to think about it, it is, uh, it's greedy. It's trying to figure out the complements of these things. So one recommendation I would say for a problem like XR is that, you know, you look at these operations. And they all take XR, right? And what does that mean? And that that basically means that every bit is independent of each other. And you could be greedy on every bit independent of each other. And what does that mean? That means that you want, you know, the max the maximum answer for XOR of all this plus one more number. And and that's the thing with XOR and this is that maybe this is something that you need to practice to kind of get a feel for it. But during the contest, and I solved this in about three minutes, and you can watch me suffer live afterwards, um, is knowing that because of this XOR property, you can get every possible number in the range from zero to two to the max bit minus one, right? And because of that, you're always going to want each bit to be one at the very end. Um, and what, what I was saying about XOR being independent is that now, instead of looking at each number as some like weird funky number, like, you know, you look at these numbers and it's all funky and you're like, what what I do with this? Um, because every bit is independent of each other on a, on a bit mask or just bits, um, you can actually just convert them to looking at ones and zeros. So then now for every bit, you know, for example, if you look at, you know, this number or th this input, you know, you have the, the zero bit, right? So the first bit, which is the zero bit, is zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And then the, the first bit is also zero, zero, one, one, uh, what's five? Five is four times one, right? So, or four plus one, sorry. Something like that, right? Um, and of course, this is just a summation, you know, uh, yeah. So basically, this is just equal to sum of all these bits together, right? Um, second bit, first bit, first bit, then, um, right? So yeah, so then now the question is, you want to optimize, hey, here's a zero bit, how do we make it one? Well, you make it one by looking at, um, you know, this is, this everything here XOR together is zero because they're, Wait, is that true? No, 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 sorry. Uh, it's going to be equal to 1. So that means that our extra bit, it's going to be extra bit is equal to 0 because now if you X, XOR 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, plus or XOR 0 is equal to 1, right? And in here, actually, this is the same thing. So this is going to be 0. So you, um, we want the answer to be 1. And then the 0 bit in the finally, um, there are two ones, so this is all going to be zero. So to make it a one, you need this to be a one, you know, so that you can get this to be a one, right? So then now, so this is the extra number that we get on a bitwise level. And then now we just have to combine them again. And here you can see that this is just four because there's only one second bit. Um, yeah. And that's basically the idea here. Behind this problem, I may maybe I messed up a little bit because that doesn't seem to match the answer that they give you. Um, hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe I uh, maybe four one what? Huh. Let's see. Three ones. Yeah. Hmm. 
Not sure. Did I mess something up? I guess so. Two, two, five, seven, right? So the last bit should be one. Wait, am I getting mid? No, it's max. Did I look at the wrong one? Hmm. Man, I don't even know how this works. Oh, 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 sorry. Because yeah, I was looking at this backwards. I was looking at the seven. But yeah, as you can see, the answer is four, right? Okay, so I was right. But I forgot that they, they the problem did it backwards. So then, but yeah. Uh, so then now this is four. And then now, you know, taking away the... And now, of course, you can figure out how to do that incrementally, right? Now for, for the first bit, you have zero, you have zero. You know, looking at just the first number, you have zero, zero, zero. So that means that, you know, this extra number is going to be one, one, one. Now that you add in a one, you know, you look at the first bit and then, you know. So this is kind of like a prefix sum from that way. And that's basically the idea behind it because now you can do each, each, um, you can add each number in just, you know, O of maximum bit. So, yeah. Um, and the way that I did during the contest was I actually took advantage of that and did it all in parallel by using the XOR function. This is basically doing the same thing that we just went over, uh, one number at a time. Um, yeah, and we just do it in the prefix sum. As I said, we did a prefix in the right order, and then at the end, we reverse it to kind of com accommodate what they ask you in the problem. So, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, this is, you know, if you take a look at this, it's going to be linear time, uh, linear space, because prefix will always have all of n number of elements. So yeah, um, and you cannot do better than that for that reason. Uh, that's all I have. Let me know what you think, and you can watch me solve it live during the contest next. So it's pretty.
Hope you enjoyed that, you know, this video. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me in Discord. Hope you did well in this contest, this problem. Uh, let me know your questions. Um, yeah, so take care of yourself, take care of others, stay good, stay healthy, stay, and to good mental health. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.